Hey you Bayers, it's Suzanne and I have a case study. This question has come in a few different ways but the bottom line is how can other sellers sell these things for so cheap? So I got an email this week and here is what she asked. I am dabbling in health and beauty and feel like I must be missing something. When I am listing shampoo, soap, etc., I can't compete with others listing the same thing. Most are providing free shipping, and I am doing calculated, as I have been doing since watching and listening to advice. In other categories, I am fine with a lower sales price plus shipping and am selling items. Our shipping seems to be averaging $7 to $8 so far. I've been in business since January 1st and have had 70-ish transactions for about $3,100 in sales. Does $7 to $8 average in shipping seem reasonable? Items have been a mix of clothes, games, Xbox games, kitchen items, appliances, bath and beauty, etc. But in this category, I just can't get there. My shipping fees seem high. Even when I go in and play with different options, I can't get the cost below five to seven dollars, especially with product lots of three to four products, which is how these seem to be listed. I just have to be missing something on shipping options. How in the world can others do free shipping on these heavy items? And I got these at 90% off retail, so low costs and still can't get there. My store is below, maybe you can take a look and have ideas. So I asked her to send me links to what she's looking at, her competitors listings, so we can see what they're doing. Because a lot of times it's not what you're doing is wrong, it's who are you competing against and what is their business model. So this is the first one, some conditioner express hair repair product pack of three. And you can see there they have a stock photo, which is always something you want to pay attention to if you are competing against someone because that can indicate other things. Seller information. They have a huge feedback number. So that may indicate they're making money on volume, not necessarily each sale. So let's go take a look at their feedback and see what we can figure out from that. So if we look at their feedback within the last month, generally speaking, if you take their total feedback, that's positive, neutral, and negative, add that up and multiply by three, that's about the amount a seller is probably selling. Because if you watch my sales update videos, normally you get about a third feedback based on your actual sales. Only about a third of your customers leave feedback. So we can figure out about how much they're selling. 852 items. That's a lot of items, okay? The average at-home seller does not sell that much. Now, let's go look at the negatives and see what they are for and see if we can see any patterns or draw any conclusions based on what the negatives are. And it looks like really bad customer service. So no communication, uh, bad product, mascara was dried out, wrong items were sent, only received half my order, nasty water filled, and wrong products sent again. So that tells me they're very sloppy on the shipping or the actual seller isn't shipping the items at all. Someone else is. Then we go look at their store and they have a large number of items, almost 2,500 items, mostly with stock photos. So this is an indication of drop shipping. If you are not familiar with drop shipping, you must become familiar with it if you're going to sell on eBay because sometimes this is our competitor. Drop shippers do not physically have the item in stock in their possession. They usually make very little profit and have no control over inventory quality, packaging, storage of inventory or delivery time. 
because they don't have the product in their possession. They also cannot answer questions about the item because they don't have it. And customer service is not usually great because they can't do anything outside of the standard model. For example, if a buyer asks for combined shipping on something or delayed shipping or express shipping, you know, they can't change any of those things because they don't physically have the item and they have to rely on someone else to actually ship it. And in a lot of cases, that someone else is Amazon. So what's happening is that people in the US and in other countries do this. So the people in other countries set up both an eBay and an Amazon account with USA addresses. And they create phantom listings on eBay using photos and information from Amazon. So they literally sit there all day, go on Amazon, find something that's selling for cheaper than it is on eBay and then they create this listing by copying the pictures and the information from Amazon and create the listing on eBay. So if we go back to this screenshot here, you can see all of these are stock photos. So all they did was just copy the pictures and the title and put that information on eBay as if they actually have the item. So they don't really have these things in stock. Now, when the item sells on eBay, the seller orders it from Amazon and has it shipped to the eBay customer. They just go in on their Prime account and they just change the ship to address to whoever it is on eBay. And so, for example, the item may sell for $10 on eBay, but costs them $8 on Amazon. They're making a tiny profit doing this, but the attraction is that they don't have to have the item in stock. They don't have to pay a whole bunch of money to buy inventory. And people at first think this is a great idea. Why? Because some people don't buy on Amazon anyway. They're never going to see how much it costs on Amazon because they don't buy there. And if that item is selling for cheaper on Amazon, this will work. While this results in low profit, it can be done without having to buy any inventory, shipping supplies. You don't have to have any of that. And to someone living in a poor country who's only making 50 cents or a dollar on each item without having to buy anything up front or actually run a real business, this can work. So we go back to the feedback of this seller was, uh, we figured out about 850 items a month. Even if they're only making a dollar, it's worth it to them because maybe they're living in a poor country where you know we wouldn't do this for a dollar but they would so that's what we're competing against when we have these items in stock that are also on Amazon or other websites they're new in the package and these products are not in their possession and you know to me this is just a huge waste of time if you live in the United States because all these thrift stores we have full of stuff, you know, all the abundance, the overflow, the waste stream that we can pick from to sell items. Uh, but some people in the United States still do this. And I can't tell you how many times I have talked to these people, coached them, whatever, to try and make them see the light on how much time is invested in doing this because you have to find these products that are actually selling but they're cheaper on Amazon and then once you find them is it sustainable no it's not you have to continually find items all the time because after a while they don't work anymore so I said all of that to say this is what we're competing with sometimes if you're selling new in the package items now, the next scenario was this listing here where we've got a, looks like a smaller seller. So let's go look at their feedback and we can see there they had 15 positives in a month so they probably sold around 45 items. This looks like a smaller at-home seller who just is buying things on clearance or maybe couponing and probably a hobby seller who doesn't track their numbers and doesn't care about profit or even know if they're making a profit. 
especially if they're a couponer that got the item for free and there's a lot of that going on I see this on Facebook groups all the time Facebook marketplace people selling their stockpiles you know they got all this laundry detergent for free or all that couponing world that stuff shows up too so sometimes people are just trying to unload that and make what they can make and they don't even care if they're making a profit they're just doing it for fun or just because they got all this stuff for free so there's no guarantee that profit even exists when you're looking at another seller they could be selling this at a loss so don't assume that because other sellers are selling things for way less than you or something about those listings don't make sense don't assume that they know what they're doing or they're making any money because a lot of times they're not and I've worked with probably thousands of sellers over the year through mentoring and coaching and on my Facebook group helping them and this happens so often where the seller has no idea I'll say well let's look at your numbers what's your profit and they don't even they have no clue they don't know so do this little detective work where you look at their feedback you know, look at their listings does this look like a legit person that's doing the business the same way you are and can you compete with them so the bottom line here is this is why I focus on used items because you can buy low and sell high and you don't have much competition on specific items so with the health and beauty example there may be a hundred listings for a shampoo you are selling but only five listings for a 100 percent cashmere blazer in this particular size so in my case this blazer retails for five hundred dollars I bought it for seven but it can sell used for over a hundred and you cannot do that with a consumable product that anyone can offer for sale it's just too much competition the market is flooded with new in the package consumables because they're more available to everyone it's simple economics supply and demand so I know I've got this whole course on consumables and I've explained how to do it but this is something you may run into so you don't want to base your business solely on any one kind of product you want to diversify but this is especially prevalent in the consumables market because if you can get your hands on it at the dollar store with coupons clearance at the grocery store wherever other people can do that too you're better off selling consumables that are maybe vintage you go to a estate sale there's a whole bunch of perfumes that may or may not be discontinued but they're vintage they're in old bottles things like that that are fewer in supply so even though it's consumable there's specific kinds of consumables that do better like the scrubbing bubbles shower cleaner stuff that sells so well because they're not making it anymore those things do well because the supply is limited so remember your basic economics of supply and demand and before you buy things to resell like this think okay how flooded is the market going to be who else can get this and uh, be aware that you may have to sell your item at cost or another way maybe on a Facebook group or a Facebook marketplace or something local because eBay does get flooded with this type of stuff it's very hard if not impossible to compete with people who are willing to make razor thin margins on their items or don't even do their numbers and have no idea that they're not making money so another one that might make your head explode but wanted to go over all of that because some of you may not know about this drop shipping business that is going on in the background bottom line picking higher dollar items is the superior method to making profit on eBay so keep that in mind thanks for watching and if you have any questions let me know bye